a beautiful leader. Yeah. As we as we have tension with obstacles, as we have hard things, yeah. as we have that tension, we so grow good. muscles when you have tension. Yeah. That's yeah. what happens, and so it's good. such a beautiful thing. So where you are now is not fixed, but I will say this, enjoy and love who you are in every one of those moments. Yes, exactly. I had to rest in the fact in every moment that I said, Father, because I would say to myself, Pam, I can't believe you're going through this again. What is wrong with you? This self-condemning, self-condemning. And then the Lord was, I had to recognize, Lord, you love me even in this moment. You love me even in this moment of growth. And that's what he does. He grows us. And so you're going to evolve, and that's the most beautiful thing. Enjoy it. Embrace the journey. And so I want to say a quick story before I show you the most encouraging thing you'll probably hear for the day. Now, this is on the slide, but I can't show it. So the most encouraging thing you'll probably hear from me today is when God put a calling on your life, he already factored in your stupidity. It's the most Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So now we can go on from there. So um, I just want to say one more thing on this whole evolving thing. Um, is years ago, a, a friend of mine... Um, shared a story years ago. She was a, a single mom, not a single, yes, pregnant mom, ended up getting married, but she was a pregnant mom, two children. Um, and she, they, they had no money. So she said, what we did was we lived in a house that we put our one son in the bedroom. I was pregnant with my daughter, and my husband and I slept on the couch. And we lived off of the groceries at a food pantry, and my grandmother paying our bills because she said we had nothing. So she said, I would stay, go take my kids to the library because it was the only thing free I could do because I didn't have the money. And so she said, while my little son was playing, I was pregnant with my daughter Olivia, and she said, I would go and I would look at all the books in the library. And she said, I came across this book. Oh my gosh, my mind just blanked out. Why the cage, wait, why the cage for sex? By Dr. Maya Angelou. Yeah, and she yeah, said, when I cracked open birthday. that book, why the cage... Sings. 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 And she said, I cracked open that book, and she said, I looked at another woman who at my age was also pregnant, who was also young, who also, but <laughs> so inside good. of that woman was an author, inside of that woman yes. was a, an actress, inside yep. of that woman. And so we have seeds in you, you have seeds in you that still have yet to come up. And so that I want to encourage you with as we jump into this as a leader. So my main scripture for today that we're really going to kind of unpack in a real, very, God's given me this very practical, um, is we're going to unpack Hebrews 12. And so everyone knows it, um, the scripture, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off Every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. You ready? And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy, yep, yeah, we have joy. We have people waiting. We have things waiting. We have people's lives to be changed. The joy that set before Jesus, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in a place of honor besides God's throne. And so God is taking us on a journey. And so what he put in my heart to share today is that we are on a race. And today, as we kind of approach the challenges of ministry... Um, and the tools that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about four areas, relationships, risks that's on your sheet, rest, and responsibility. As we talk about those things, this is what I'm believing, that there's something that God's going to deposit in you because I believe he's wanting to give us something to um, help us to endure to go the way, uh, the distance between <coughs> you and I, whether we want to uh, jump up and say, I'm going to show up for my race. God has oh, called you and enlisted oh. you to run a race. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And we all have a different race to run. And so this whole thing about race, I just kept sensing God wants to increase our capacity, give us tools for the distance. And in order to do that, there's some essentials. So if I am going to be going on a race, right? Now, this is just me. I don't know if any of you are going to... I am not going to do a race in these shoes. I'm going to do that. Like, 
no. you are not, right? Because uh, if, if I'm going to enjoy my race, I'm not going to be putting these on. I'm probably going to put something more like yeah. my Nikes on. Yeah, you because, go ahead, girl. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. yeah. these are going to give me yeah. the right. traction yeah. that I need to go the distance, Ooh. right? And so yeah. what happens is we carry, like we have weights that we carry, and we were laughing because all weekend, Cindy and I were rooming together. Before she even, we got here, she's like, I know it's supposed to rain. I don't know what shoes to bring. I'm like, there you go, girl. It's always about shoes. Always. Shoes, right? always. Because we're going to be trudging through the rain. So think about that. When you plan it, Good. it's like, oh, I need to have the right shoes on. Like, I need to have the right things. When I go walking, I go, prepared. I'm sorry. If I'm talking too fast, I'm a fast oh, you're doing So you're doing I try good. to slow it down. So when I go walking, I go to Lavalette Boardwalk all the time. I love it there. That's like my walking spot. This is what I do when I go to Lavalette. I leave everything in the car, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I put my little fanny pack. My kids, my kids think this is so dorky, but uh -huh. <laughs> when you have boys that are like 20, 23, they tell you it's yeah. straight. Like, yeah. it's like, oh my gosh. So I put this on, right? Why? Time. Because I don't want to be carrying Caring, all wait. of the things, um, the, all of the things, my keys and my phone. I'm just like throw it in here, um, like weightless. And when you're running a race, we want to, we're going to talk about the things that we're going to need to let go of. Ooh, we're going to talk about the on. things that we're um, going to um, need for this race. Yeah. Um, and when I was planning for this message, oh my gosh, getting to the next page. When I was planning for this message, I had uh, talked to a sister. She actually was going to be in here. I don't see her. Um, and she's a coach, she's a leadership coach, because I kept sensing, the Lord kept saying, I, this season that I'm in, I need you to set up systems. I need you to set up greater systems. And, oh. and my family, my kids are at an age room now, they're very busy, they're going to school, work, they're involved in the ministry a lot. Uh, my one son's on the worship team, so his schedule's crazy, and I was finding that everything was falling back on me. Oh. My husband is a real process guy, but he's like, Pam, um, he's one, he's over, he's the administrator pretty much of our church, over like 400 volunteers, so he's he's very busy, and he's more of an introvert, so when he comes home, he doesn't want to think yeah. about processes. I was finding that processes were falling back on me, yeah. and I'm a heart-to-heart -heart relational person. I, I'm administrative, but I am not, like, don't let me set up, I don't want to do all the processes, because I'm doing that all the time in so many different areas. So the Lord began to minister to me saying, I I want you to get support in this season. And so I called her up and I checked out this coach and I'm like, the Lord wants me to get support because I know he's wanting me to set up systems so that he can grow me and my time and energy could now be focused on some other areas. Yeah. And then he does it at times. And so she said this, and this was like a confirmation for this message. She said, Pam, if you were going to go on an 800 mile journey, but you only had gas for 400 miles, huh. you are not gonna make it. Huh. And I was like, yeah. wow. oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I said, she's right. If we're yeah. carrying baggage, if we don't have the things, the essentials for that 800 mile race, where, where are we going to get it from? And so there's paces for a leader that we need to have in mind as we as we go through this. And Apostle Paul said this, Acts 20, 21, I love this. He said, if only I may finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have been um, obtained um, and entrusted with. You and I have been entrusted with something. We've been entrusted with influence with people. Some of us entrusted with the ministry. Some of us entrusted with a family, different things. And we want to be faithful to that. Paul yeah. encourages Timothy to fulfill your ministry. Each one of you, how many of you want to fulfill your ministry? Amen? Amen. We want to fulfill our ministry. So praise the Lord. So, um, okay, let me just, okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about you, it, it, with our sheets, and this is going to be real practical here. Um, the first thing we want to talk about is leadership one of the challenges of leadership can be that it's very lonely. Mm, yep. you, as you kind of go up, you have more responsibility. And sometimes, yep. I've been in a church for 25 years, and I'll be honest, loneliness has probably been the biggest struggle for me. Mm -hmm. And um, and relationships are going to be really, really important. And so the reason why sometimes we... You know, being in, in ministry uh, and being lonely, and a lot of times we have a lot of responsibilities. So sometimes you just don't have the time to spend with people. Other times you're not going to 
have someone who's a close confidant that is just, um, in, if you're in a church, in your church, okay? Um, the other times, the other things is sometimes there's like, you spend time in prayer, you spend time um, preparing things. And so sometimes you just don't have time. And there are lonely seasons of transition. Jesus had very lonely seasons at times. And so I want to look at this picture for a minute, okay? This picture is a formation. And so I'm going to read you. It's called the Geese Formation. Uh -huh. um, oh, I love and, it. Uh, love it. Yeah, thank you. It's called the geese formation. And I want you to, you know, if you've ever watched geese fly in this formation, right? Yeah. There's a purpose in that. And so I want to read you this formation. So the formation is the geese flying together. Flying takes a lot of energy, right? Yeah. So does our race. It's going to take energy, right? <laughs> and the formation of the geese, listen to this. They have 70% greater flying range together than if they did it alone. 70% more energy gets infused in them when they're doing it together instead of alone, okay? When out of formation, listen, they feel the drag and resistance of flying alone, and when the lead goose is tired, right? So you've got this one up here. When that gets tired, that lead goose goes to the back rotates yep. and someone else takes the lead Woo! in there, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Other than, uh, this is another thing, when the lead geese is tired or rotates, right, other geese honk to encourage the one up front, we need people oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on. 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 So that they keep up their speed and their courage. When a goose gets wounded and falls, others come down and follow it while it's on the ground to protect the geese, right? And this, I love this one because I'm such a vision, visual person. Flying in a V lets the birds keep visual contact, which keeps them going in the right direction so they don't get lost on their way. Hebrews 10, and I'm going to read it now. I'm going to go out of my, let me just find it because I'm skipping around in my notes here. Give me a minute. Hebrews 10 says this. Hebrews 10. As, now listen, as the time gets closer to Jesus coming back, there's going to be more to pull you off your race. There's going to be more to pull you off your focus, more to pull you off your race. And that's why we need relationships. But there's a formation God has given us. We're going to talk about that. So Hebrews 10 says this. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. Um, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways, that, that, that hunker, right? To motivate one another to love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Listen to me. As time gets closer of Jesus' return, right? What happens is, there is, there's so much in our culture that's going to try to pull you. When we have, and we're going to talk about the right formation, the proper formation, just like those geese, when one starts to get off, when one starts to lose energy, that, those geese, um, we have, when we start to get off that, uh, where we're supposed to be, someone comes and encourages, imparts courage. Someone comes and does the race with you. When we get tired, we need people to come in there and do this race with us. Amen? Amen? So here's our formation. As women in leadership, our formation is this. It's really a simple little thing that I need. Good morning. And so our formation is, if you turn to the circle, okay? God is so good. He's so wise, right? So our main formation, that little heart is you. That's your heart, okay? That first ring is the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I put all three because, listen, that relationship has got to stay. That This is our formation. He is in the middle. He's your most intimate relationship. Listen to me. He is the relationship that is our compass, okay? You would not go on a journey. We have a GPS now, but our compass. This stays with us. Yeah. Every season of the journey, he will be with you. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So see, we never have to. Oh, okay, wait. 
we, we share the road. This is what I was supposed to show you now. I forgot. Share the road. We share the road. So we don't ever want to be walking through the mountains, all of this, see these winding roads. We don't want to have to do it ourselves. He is the only constant. He is the only Amen. one in every season. Amen. He is looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. He stays in that middle ring. It's the most intimate relationship. It's our life force comes from him. When we spend time with him, he in the secret place. Listen, on this road, okay, see, see, there's going to be uh, storms. There, you can't see around the bed what's coming, but he can. Mm -hmm. no. So he's the one that's going to go before yeah. us. Like the children of Israel, remember, he said, put the Ark of the Covenant in the middle. Why? You've never been this way. Keep your eyes on Jesus, eyes on the presence of God. Why? He wants to lead us. He wants us to lead into him. He wants us to do our leadership, not in our own strength, but in the strength of who he is. And so he's in every, he's the compass. He's the one. And David's life it's so amazing. In Psalm 63, he says, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My inner self thirsts for you. My flesh longs and is faint for you in a dry and weary land. David knew when he went and he went after Goliath, he said, He's delivered me from the lion and the bear. He knew he built a track record with God in the secret place. He, and when, when your relationship with God needs to be authentic, it needs to be genuine. In other words, we want to be able to pour out our hearts to God and be real with God. We're in relationship with him. And sometimes, like I used to, I used to just like read the word of God and feel like, oh, I'm spending time with God. And the past few years, God's taken me to such a deeper place of like, no, Pam, it's a relationship. Talk to me. Share your heart with me. Let me, and so sometimes I'll sit and be like, Lord, Oh man, what are we going to do about this? Like, talk yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah, to be yeah, in relationship yeah, with him. Good. He yeah, is your amen. ever present, yeah. always, amen. on every step of your journey, every step that you're going to walk through here and here. He's the only one that's always going to be with you. So he has to be in that circle. It's out of that relationship you're going to forgive. It's he's going to work out the dynamics of your heart. So we keep him in yeah. that spot. The next ring. We're in the relationship we're in here, is our husband. If you're married, it's your husband. If you're not married, maybe it's like a sister, someone else that's just really close with you. And so, let me just get to my notes here. Um, all right, I totally forgot to do a stop right there, um, but we're going to move. Um, let me ask you this. One of the things I want you to think about, and just write this down, we're not going to work it because... We'll just kind of really sit at the end because we're I'm moving. There's still a lot I want to talk about. Um, I want you to think about what is taking up or what is a distraction for you with your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So I want you to think about that even when you process this, when you go home. Mm -hmm. So we're still talking about relationships. Mm -hmm. Your husband and your family are next. I just want to say this real quickly about husband. We're not going to camp on husband and family. I want to say this. Enjoy your husband if you're married. I, I, when I did this exercise that I'm doing with you, a similar exercise a few years ago, I realized I didn't have anyone in my life really that was pouring into me. I was working in addiction recovery at my church, and I'm like, I don't really have anyone pouring into me. I went and paid a counselor. Every week I met with her on Zoom. Come on, girl. Because I needed something. Right. There's wisdom in the multitude of counsel. Yeah, right? It's really know. important to have people. Dana, you know we've talked about this, sweetie. You're the, she's the one who confirmed what I was sharing this, this message. Um, and I shared that earlier. Um, but um, your husband, I want to say this, and this is what my counselor said, because I would be like, you know, I'm such a feeler, and so I just take, I'm a mercy, compassionate, very merciful, very person. I'm like, but my husband's not, like, feeling this thing, like, this is going on, and I'm taking this to heart. And she's like, and I will never forget. She goes, Pam, did you ever think that the way that he's wired is because God has equipped him to function the way he needs to? That's that right. set me free. I That's was right. like, now That's I can right. do that. Now I don't look at him and be like, why are you not reacting like me? Why are you not reacting like me? Because God has equipped him. Now he's a minute. 
an administrator. Right. My husband is a very strong leader. You know my husband. You work with him in different capacities. Very decisive. Very black and white. And and I'm like, oh, and I'm feeling, I have to have a conversation with someone. I map it out. I go to yeah. the Lord. I pray about it. Because I'm like, how, you know, before I jump into that. He's just like, does it. And that used to bother so me. But now it's like, yeah. appreciate the strength in your husband. That's what I want to yeah. say about your husband. Amen. That's so good. And that frees him. It does. Yeah. It frees him to yeah. be him because I would yeah. put so many expectations on him. Yeah. I do it really fast. Um, and he also appreciates your strengths because one time Nicole and I sat with him and we were like, we're thinking about this and this is the ministry. He goes, we should talk to my wife. Oh, amen. Oh, oh, look at that. Yeah. 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 And, and, I, and with your kids, I want to say this. Family is that next ring. Thank you for sharing that. Family is the next ring. And I want you to realize that family is your priority in any ministry. Amen. Listen, there's good. always going to be one more That's person good. to reach. Always going to be one more thing to do. And listen, this is really important because I had to learn this. These people... Husband, family, we're going to get to the fourth one in just a minute. Husband, family, right? They will require more of your energy, and they deserve to have more of your energy. Amen. The people in that inner circle are closest to the core of who you are, right? They're closest to the core of you, and they deserve and will have most of your energy. I love what Danny Silk said. He's an amazing yeah. guy on relationships. Yeah. Yeah. He said, there's lots of people that drive by your house all day, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, but... You haven't invited, there's a very small percentage that you're going to invite into your living room yeah. and then your bedroom. Right. He wow. said, oh. so there, that's, there, that's, with those people that are closest to you like that, they deserve your energy. They take more of your time and energy. And you have to have that, again, we said that the geese have their formation that keeps them running their race. This is our formation. Relationships is key to running our race. We cannot run our race without people. Um, okay, so I want you to, um, just, this is your question, we're not going to stop for this because I'm so sorry, but we're, the time's flying. Um, but God is going to say what he wants to say. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Amen. Pre create special moments with your kids. Mm -hmm. um, and integrate your family in the ministry when you can. Mm -hmm. Do yeah. that. Um, with my kids, one of the things we used to do when we were little is we would like if we if we just went to somewhere that we had to go, like like a food store or something. We're like, okay, let's all get in the car and go just to spend time with the kids when they were little, because we tried to spend time doing little things with the kids to incorporate them in. Okay, I want you to identify. You don't have to do that now, but write this down for later reflection, because this is just the beginning. When you leave here after this weekend, that's when the Holy Spirit's going to yeah, continue the work that we started this weekend. So identify one to two things that rob your attention when you're with your family. Like my son Anthony and I are really big. When we're, on, when we're eating or at a restaurant or something, it's like, nope, I don't go on my phone. My right. son Anthony is like, that drives him crazy. And both of us are very similar. Okay, the next thing is, and this is um, going to take a few minutes. We do want to stop with this. I'm going to call it the core four. Now, John Maxwell says, if you ask John Maxwell, he said, mm -hmm. if I was going to go teach on anything in leadership, the number one thing I'd teach on the law of the inner circle. And that means that the yeah. five people closest to you, um, the five people closest to you will uh, be the ones who influence and impact your leadership the most. Okay? I'm calling it the core four because... Um, I, I want to just kind of, it rhymes, and I love rhyming yeah. things, so yeah. I just dropped down the, five, dropped the Good. fifth one off, and we made it four. Okay, so here we go. So your inner circle people, listen, it's important to have people outside of the ministry who sow into you. And I told you, right now I'm on the seeking of, a, and I told Dana, a coach, why? Right, because I want someone, someone needs to be pouring into me to help me grow. So these people, this is what you're gonna, this is what happens. When you have these people closest to you, I had a woman in my life that God used in a season and a stretch. Again, now, some of these core four people are gonna move out of this to another that's community out there, but I didn't put it on there. So seasons, different people are gonna come into yep, that course for different yep. seasons. Yes. And you have to know what season you're in. That's this right. lady, yeah. Becky Harmon, this is what I said to her. I would get on the phone with her. She was a coach that I had, and she would I said, Becky, when I get off the phone with you, I feel like the life of God was just breathed into me. I said, It's like my faith, something in my heart just was like, Burr. 
And I say, he showed me a balloon. So when you have people around you, when you, that core four is so important because you need people that are gonna expand Amen. your way of thinking, yeah. expand what you can Ooh. see, the possibilities of what you can yeah. do, yeah. expand what you can carry as a leader. Yeah. Because Becky Harmon, in that season of my life, allowed me to access things I could never have without her in my life. I know that's right. When you have, David had, look at Nathan in David's life. Moses had his father-in-law Jethro. Jethro was like, Moses, you're going to kill yourself the way you're right. in leadership. This is the way you do it. The wisdom of God gets imparted by these people. And what happens? You become more of her. We're talking about becoming yeah. her. That wisdom Great. we want. That yeah. we grow in our capacity. These people help us. Nathan, what did he do? Nathan went to David after committing adultery. And what did Nathan David, this is, this is, you're the man I'm talking about. Right. He spoke right. in, created a place for authenticity, and what did he do? He spoke in to David's life, and because of what he spoke into David's life, you could read it in Psalm 51. David went back to yeah. God. David's heart was moved back to the Lord. Why? Because there was someone willing in his life to be accountable and speak into his life. You need those people in your life. You've got to have them in your life. Amen. And now, you're not, there are going to be seasons when it's just you and God. When you're sharing the road with just God. Yes. Jesus in the garden, it was just him. Everyone else dropped off and fell asleep, whatever it is. Mm. But for the most part, you have to have people coming in and out of that circle. Now, I don't have my, well, I'm, I'll just use my little thing back here. The other thing is this, and again, this, could, this is a whole teaching in itself on the inner circle, but I'm just going to, because this is to me such an important one. The people that are in that inner circle bring an influence. So you don't just put anyone in that inner circle. I'm going to use this. Danny Silk. That's so wise. Use this illustration. This is what Danny Silk said. Danny yep. Silk said, if I threw my wallet in the middle of a mall, that would say there's nothing valuable in there because everyone has access to it. Not That's everyone good. should have access to the inner core right. of their heart. Right. They should be trustworthy. Yeah. They should yep. be people right. of wisdom. Yep. They should be people that are allowed to be in that spot. Because listen to me. There's some baggage and some influence, whether for good or bad, yep. that when people come in and influence, they may go out of your life, but that influence, oh, now you're having to process through it. Right. God redeems it. Mm. But... Amen. That circle, not everyone should be in that circle. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. And so, but Jenny, and I, oh, I love this. Jason, a guy named Jason from Keswick, this man, this man, oh gosh, this man, this man, this man was, uh, his story was public, so I don't feel bad for him. He was, in Keswick, he was abused, sexually molested by priests for years. And this man went through Keswick's, if you know the addiction recovery, yeah. it's amazing. Yes. I worked there for yes. two years with the women. He went through the men's program there. Mm. Uh, sexually abused for over 10 or 12 years, something oh crazy gosh. like that. Wow. This is what Jason said. The more I heal, the more I am convinced that the greatest tool to heal is people. Mm. People who sit with us in our darkest hours, People who hear us when we cry for help. People who hold space and remind us that we're not alone. This is the ultimate bomb that opens the wounds of trauma. Wow. God, and if you're in leadership, you've got to have these people. Yeah, right. Do you know how much I have been exposed so much to this woman that was my counselor for almost two years? I'm like, sometimes I'd be embarrassed to say this is what's going on in my heart. And this woman didn't judge me. And you need to be that leader in someone else's yep. life. You create an authentic... Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, accepting oh, unconditional love because, and this is what she said to me one time because I have such a heart to see women's hearts heal she yeah. said to me, I didn't even realize that it was, a, it was an equipment from God, she said Pam the reason why you create such an authentic place for people is because of this God oh, she, this is so good, she goes God creates an unconditional accepting environment for you that's right, that's right. That's right. That's right. which causes the yes. ultimate healing yes. Yes. so she, when we do that for oh. someone else we're creating an yes. atmosphere yes. for healing to take place because yes. that's what God yes. does for us so good. Amen? Yes. Okay. so 
I, I would go on. This is like my jam. I, I could go on, but I can't because we have other stuff to talk about. And so we're going to stick with the core four for two minutes. So this is what I want you to do. Now, I've done this exercise before, but recently I do this with that girl right there. If you're looking for a leadership coach, she's your girl. Dana, right there in the back. She sat, and when we sat and did this, I was like, oh, my gosh. And now I saw why this season was so pivotal for me to talk with someone. So we sat down. I want you to write down the four people in that little spot, the four people that are closest to you. When I say that, who? Not family. It can be family. It's who is it that you go to when you have issues? Like if you had an issue, who is it that you're picking up the phone? Not who would you call, who do you call? Like who are those people who have the closest access to your heart? What if you only have two? Yeah. Yeah. What? What if you only have two? That's fine. That's fine. Okay. You can only put, yeah. Some, yeah. And honestly, really with that space, a lot of times it's one to two. So now with this, what I want you to do because listen, people are, this is important for leadership. Who is in our lives? This is really important. I want you to put an R if they're a refueler and a D if they're a drainer. Oh. oh. <laughs> Do they refuel wow. you or drain you? Mm. Wow. Yeah. When I just did this exercise recently with Dana, I came out with so, God just, I realized even my responsibility, so much of it was a, the draining part of me. Because I, I'm, not, I'm not operating, and I operate a lot of administrative stuff, and I'm like, oh, wow, a lot of this stuff drains me. Mm -hmm. So it's important. So, and when I did this exercise with, my, with Dana, I realized my son Anthony was my biggest refueler. Our, our relationship is just very refueling. He's a lot like me with the things of God. And so, so I want you to also think about as you go from here, Lord, if I don't have any refuelers, um, can you, like, start praying and asking the Lord. For me, I went to a counselor and got a, a counselor to work with. Um, and I want you to do this, and again, we don't have time, I'm so sorry, but I want you to write down, as you spend time with the Lord over the next few days, um, how can you guard those refuelers, that relationship? How can you be more intentional? Like, what's one thing you can do throughout your week or month um, to refuel, uh, to, to really keep that relationship. Um, I realized when I, uh, Jenny Allen says this, she talks about relationships in her book on find your people. And one of the things she said is she was so busy in ministry. She said, the people that I said were the closest to me I never spent any time with. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I say that certain people are so close to me and I don't even see them. Yeah. I see them. Yeah. And you really take an assessment and well, do I really spend time with this person? Right. Okay. So, um, the refuelers fight for those people. You fight to guard those relationships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't have anyone in this place, again, pray. Maybe someone in a connect group. You could uh, a leader at your church. I, I can't really. I don't have time to go into it, but just start with prayer, I guess. Number two on responsibility. So you want to stay in your lane, right? We want to stay in our lane. How many hate when people drive into your lane, right? It's dangerous. <laughs> You don't want people coming into your lane. Don't go into That's someone else's right. lane. And so when we're running our race, we want to stay in our lane and get rid of weights. So with our relationships, we want to know who's refueling us and minimize the drain drainers. Um, responsibilities. You have to give yourself permission to experience new seasons, new priorities, new new um, like operating in different roles, and people. Some of the things, again, when we run a race, we, what does it say? We strip down those things. We strip off the weights, right? We want to strip off the weights. And so what we need to do is we need to rest in the fact, as a leader, we need to rest in the fact that you do not need to meet every need. Oh, how about that? You do not need to meet every need. Now, I'm going to say a quick story. Uh, quick two stories. A few yeah. years ago, this is when things started to change. I was starting to go through menopause. I thought maybe I had autoimmune. I was exhausted. I didn't realize I was just burnt out. Mm -hmm. And I remember my dad was in the hospital, and he was getting um, he was getting a surgery, 
And I was supposed to host that church that night. It's like you get up, you do the announcements, the offering, and everything. And I literally laid on my bed. I felt like a piece of cement. I was exhausted. And I remember saying, call Pastor Jerry and see if he could do the hosting for you. And this is what I said to myself. No, Pam is the one who's like, come on, she's a responsible one. You push through, girl. You push through. And this is what the Holy Spirit said to me. He said, it takes as much faith to rest as it does to push through. I thought that's right. I thought that's right. It actually took more faith to be in place of rest than to go to push And from that moment on, the Lord began to deal with me. Rest. There's a family in our church right now going through something that, and Pastor Sidney and I know, they're, they're going through something that has probably been the hardest yeah. season to walk through someone with. Mm -hmm. The husband was in a devastating car accident. Mm -hmm. And going up to the hospital, we were saying we just leave. And it's like in one minute. And we're believing this for this man's healing. Mm -hmm. But I've never had to walk through. And this family has probably, out of any family, been the closest family to me personally. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, I said, Alicia, I would be doing everything for you. Let me, and I have the great little pizzas over for the kids and stuff. Yeah. But I said, it's the body of Christ, and I can't do it all. Because my, my heart would be like, let me be there every minute. Yeah. Let me do this for her. Let me run and do that. But you know what? Everyone needs to step up and do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this was a big thing for me. I had to realize. This is what the Lord said to me with this, top, with this area. Um, the Lord said to me, Pam, just give me a minute. I want to for, communicate it properly. He said, I'm the need meter. The need meter. I'm the need meter. I meet needs. Okay, this is what he said. So it takes faith. Say it takes faith. It takes faith to say, I'm going to step aside. And God, you know the need. It doesn't have to be me all the time. You speak to someone about them all the time. Because it's the body of Christ. And we do. Yes. 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 We yes. want to meet Ooh. every need, not every need is to meet. Yes. Yes. Let him pick who he wants to meet and meet. Yes. Yes. When Jesus. I was working in addiction recovery, I remember Super. everyone had COVID one year. And I remember um, my, my whole family had COVID and I didn't get it. My husband and the kids had COVID. But they're like, you can't come back to work until you get tested. The test was never coming back. And in the meantime, everyone was dropping like fries that were working there with COVID. So I was like, Oh my gosh, I didn't get my COVID test back. I need to get there. I need to get there. And the Lord's like, no, you don't. He's like, I know the need. Why do you have to be the one? Because it's like sometimes we're like, I have to be the one to do it. No. God will do it. We just want to be led by the Spirit of God. That's why he's the compass on every journey, every part. He'll lead you to the things that you need to be involved in. Listen to him. Take time to listen to him. Put the distractions aside and listen. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. So, um, let me see. Uh, many times we bring those expectations and pressures on ourselves. And listen to me. I'm going to say this. You will get drained, exhausted, and um, you will be doing something in the flesh and that will not produce oh, that's right. When it's led of the Spirit yeah. of God, there's yeah. fruitfulness. Yeah. Okay? Amen. So we want to today, well, um, and we want to be in our lane as far as just be where God is asking you to be. Be the person he's asking you to be. And I want to say this, because you carry something that no one else can, and they carry something that you can't. Yeah. So we want to stay in our lane. And just enjoy being who you are. Yes. Enjoy being who you are. At 53 years old, I finally yeah. am like at rest and yeah. not feeling like I have to be one of the other pastors on staff because I was just saying to Cindy this week, and I'm like, I have to feel like I have to be Pastor Beth. She's so proper. I wasn't brought up in a proper family. I was like, oh, my gosh. And now, and I'm, now I'm appreciating, well, some people might not want to go to her. They come to me because I am more relational, maybe. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. it's like... There's something you have to just stay in your lane. And I want to say this one other thing on this one, on our responsibilities. And then you're going to write some a question down. Um, remember people who work on your teams, remember this too. They have families and lives. Don't see people oh. as a means to an end. Thank Thank you. Every time we get on the phone, right, Cindy, with our sisterhood wow. meetings, 
The first thing I say is, what's God speaking to you? What's God doing in your life? We pray together. I'm not going to jump right into business because why? <coughs> Ministry is building people. They are the greatest work that we do. <coughs> and so in, on the flip side of that, be careful not to carry their burdens either. That those burdens, you have to trust God. You have to trust God with those people. You have to trust the God in those people. Okay? That's all. You can't fix anyone. That, that's not what we're here to do. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So, number three is we're going to rest and refuel. Okay, here we are. Where are we on our journey? We are going to rest. Here, rest stop. When you are on a journey, you got to stop. You got to rest, right? That's why they have rest stops. Oh, Guys, I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm going to flip, flip back. Your question for the last one? Yes. Because listen, 70% of your energy will be zapped by emotional energy makes up 70% of your energy. So when you're zapped emotionally, you're going to, you're going to feel it physically. So you're going to sit down when you get home from here and you're going to write down what are the sum of the, even the commitments, responsibilities, I have right now that I know are draining and not for this season. There's no grace on it. Can you say that again? Yeah. Say it again. What are the commitments, responsibilities that are draining me right now? They're draining my emotional and spiritual energy. And and this this thing would be like, and, and this is I had a recent thing because I had to delegate some things because I said long term, this thing would be. And I love what um, the, the two guys that wrote the book, Necessary Endings, they said, when you prune a plant, does something become damaging and draining? If it's damaging and draining, I realized there were some areas that I was operating in just recently that if I stay with this, it's going to be a long-term drain, and I will not finish. I will not have that 800 gas miles to finish that race. And so I had to delegate some things. And so... Um, and what attitudes and patterns are weighing on you? Like that thing with my husband was an attitude. That would drain my emotional energy to change him, mm-hmm. and I had to constantly change him. Mm-hmm. So what emotion, what things are weights for you? Because we want to strip off those weights. So resting, um, I just want to say this. Resting is a lifestyle, but resting also, I love this, and this is a quote by someone I know. You probably don't know her, but she says this. Rest, part of rest is believing that you are fully supported by God yes. in every yes. area yes. and that he has, listen to this, aligned his resources with your call. Yes. Isn't that good? Yes. Yes. Rest is believing that you're fully supported by God in every area mm-hmm. and that he has aligned his resources with your call. Now, on the note of rest, it's important to stop, get away, refuel, I want to read a quote by Carl Lentz, and then I'm going to say one more thing on this. Carl Lentz said this. Now, we know he just stepped down not too long ago from Hillsong. He had an affair. I'm not judging. That's not what I'm I'm sharing. This This is what he said. Over the years, I did not do an adequate job of protecting my own spirit, refilling my soul, and reaching out for the readily available help. When you lead from an empty place, Mm -hmm. you make choices that have painful consequences. If you're leading from an empty cup, you will make bad decisions because weariness will partner with bad decisions. And so Jesus was the amazing model at this. Jesus took time away to care for his soul. Jesus took time away from ministry, took time away from people so that he can be refueled, he can deal with the hurts, because there will be hurts, there will be disappointments on this journey of ministry, and we need a place to process them. We need a place to sit and say, Lord, what's going on in my soul? And allow God to minister to those places. It's so important that you stop and rest and refuel. Jesus He's an amazing model at this. I'm not going to read the scripture, but in Mark 6, 31 to 32, we see Jesus doing that. We see Elijah in his ministry. He took time. We get on, it's like he with eight, stop, rest. And, and in those resting times, God gives us fresh vision. Yeah. So under responsibilities, you um, are under rest. Write down at least two activities that recharge you or refuel you. And so Dana, when I did this exercise with Dana, 
I realized that everything for me, I didn't have a lot of refuelers. So this summer, I spent, um, oh gosh, uh, I spent time, <laughs> yes, we have, yeah. how many minutes do we have? Three? You have three minutes. Okay. Yeah, we need to be prompt. Because okay. we only have an hour and yep. we're back okay. at one o'clock. So I'm going to do the activation yeah. now. Mm -hmm. um, so the risk, uh, the, um, with this, with this one, I just want to say, um, go. If it's going to the beach, things like that, you have to do it, okay? And then the last thing I just want to say, risks, I can't go into, but risks, I'm just going to show you there's times that as leaders we go first. We have to go first, and we have to, and that can be really scary. And so one of the things I just want to say, and I want you to all stand up right now. Um, I want you to all stand up. I'm going to share this and go right into um, our prayer, what we want to pray. I'm going to say this. A few years ago, and, I, and it, this happened with when I talked with my counselor, I was leaving in an area. I was so not, I, was, I felt intimidated. I was like, I can't do this. And I remember going to her and she said, what is it that you're believing? And I said, at the core, I'm believing I don't have what it takes to do this. And she said to me, praise the Lord, you're in good company because every single person Amen. that God called Amen. did not have what they needed. And it literally shifted everything about my life because I recognized that when we came to taking risks, which we have to as leaders, and stepping into places we don't know that we're equipped for, we have to recognize that our weaknesses are not obstacles for God, but they are opportunities for his grace. So when you're standing at something and you have to take a risk and you don't know that you can do it, the, the grace of God is there in every weakness. And I want to say this. God is looking as we go into this. I want you to raise your hands. God is looking for empty vessels. He's looking for us to pour out of all that we are and allow him to pour all that he is in us. Allow him to pour all of the grace that we need in us. Father, thank you for empty vessels today. Father, thank you that we just open our hearts today and surrender any areas, Father God, that we need to surrender, Father God, to say, Lord, come, do a work in me as a leader, Father God. Lord, thank you. I'm going to read scripture and then I'm going to have a prayer over you. 2 Timothy 4, 1, 8. As Paul was looking towards his death at the end of the ministry, his last words of insight to Timothy, his young, his young, the young pastor, Paul encouraged him to use his spiritual gifts to strengthen his loyalty to Christ and to be steadfast and endure in the middle of hardship. 2 Timothy, I want to pray over you. I charge you, therefore, sisters, before God and the Lord Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, they have itching ears. Yeah. But be watchful in all things. Endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. And this is my prayer for you. Henry Varley says this. The world has yet to see what God will do with a man or woman who is fully consecrated to him. So, Father, we consecrate. I want you to lift your hands. We consecrate. You ready? We consecrate our hands for healing. Thank you that you use our hands with the compassion of God for healing. Father, thank you that you use our mouths to speak a word in season that sustain the weary places in people. Thank you that you give us eyes to see past this natural realm, by the spirit realm, by your Holy Ghost, Father God. That you give us eyes to see with eyes of faith. That we see with eyes of the spirit. Father, thank you that you give us feet. We commit and consecrate our feet to follow you wherever you lead us. Father, thank you that we have a heart that obeys and says yes. I, that yes, we will go. That Father, thank you for surrendered hearts. And Father, thank you that we consecrate every member of our body, every member to, to you, Father God, as instruments of righteousness. And Lord, I pray that the anointing on each and every woman and the capacity to endure would be increased in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Ladies, I'm sorry I couldn't have seen I want to be honored with the time, and I'm so sorry. You're not good. But have a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Pam.